Hey, everybody. Welcome to Long Story Short, the podcast. I'm Megan. I'm Wendy. And later on in today's episode, we're really excited to talk about our favorite vacation destinations ever as we start thinking about maybe getting to travel again someday soon. Um, but first, a couple little housekeeping notes. You can always find us and our show notes at meganandwendy.com, and the show notes are meganandwendy.com slash podcast. And you can join our Facebook group if you want more from us, Long Story Shorties, or you can follow us on Instagram where we are Megan and Wendy LSS. Uh, yes, and send us your emails. We love to read them. It's meganandwendy at gmail.com. I don't believe we have an update from Lene today. I really needed to know about this maintenance man, so I'm hoping that she's listens to the show still um i may i may message her because i gotta know i gotta know um also let's remind the folks at home that we have patreon and you can join our patreon at patreon.com slash megan and wendy is that right <laughs> it is right and if you join now you get access to our back catalog of patreon bonus content so there's bonus podcast episodes videos and video versions of podcasts that you may have heard already in your ears. And if you subscribe at our highest tier, you automatically get sent our approved stickers, which you can also order on our website, which of course I will link in our show notes today. Get yourself a sticker. By the way, I know you sent me one, but I haven't received it yet. Do you check your mail often? Daily? I mean, daily? every few days. No, oh God, no, no. So I mean, I know I should. Mail just but, sitting uh, in your mailbox. So inside of our mailbox, there's like a locked space. Uh, so mm-hmm. the mail person will put like junk mail in like an open space, and then any kind of like env- sealed envelope or whatever in the locked space. But um, um, I should do it on the daily. I'm just, you know, it's two houses down. I don't want to lock. Two houses down some days. Well, it's funny you say that because mine used to be two houses down. And I did check it daily because we had horrible mail theft in our neighborhood all the time. And for a long time, my three neighbors and I would all get each other's – whoever got there first would get everyone's mail and then just drop it off to each other. Then the pandemic hit. We stopped doing that because we were like, oh, we can't touch each other. Can't touch your mail. (laughs) And then our neighborhood put in locked mailboxes for everybody. But – There is a locked mailbox directly across the street from where our mailbox used to be, but it's not mine. So my mailbox is like, instead of two houses away, it's like seven houses away. So now I go like every three days because it's too far. BTW, I want to tell you that I I printed off our spring printable delivery thank you delivery person thing. So cute in color, printed out. Isn't it adorable? I mean, kudos to you for designing it. (laughs) But it's so cute on my front porch. And I saw on my ring camera, our mailman grabbed himself a Gatorade yesterday. So it makes me so happy. I do love that. That makes me happy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So So we will link that in the show notes as well. If you want to leave a basket of treats for your delivery person, especially now that the weather is warming up. Um, It's just a nice little thing, especially if you get a lot of deliveries. Like me. Regularly, like most of us, I think. Oh, my God. Every single day, I'm telling you. (laughs) I have to fill that basket like every three days. Uh, Last week, I mentioned very briefly that I had done my first sunless tan of the season. Mm -hmm. And I believe you also jumped on that bandwagon. My God, Megan. I don't know what I was thinking. I just jumped right in. Uh, Like, it's not like I've never used a self tanner before. Mm-hmm. But um okay, so first of all, let me back up. If I sound a little bit different, it's because I'm coming to you not from my regular closet space. I am in a, a hotel room. Um so I might sound a little bit different. Anyway, so we are out of town and I was like, I need a tan. So I uh, got myself the new Jurgens soul, which is like a foam. Mm-hmm. Have you seen it? Mm-hmm. And it's colorless as well. Oh. So yeah. So when you put it on, and it does say this on the bottle, it says like you can see kind of like a, a glean, like mm-hmm. so you can see like where it goes, but it dissipates very quickly. And I also bought the mitt with it. Mm-hmm. And I just like went to town and then I got dressed and I went over to my parents' house. And while we were at my parents' house, like four hours later, my husband's like, wow, your ankle, ankles are really orange. And I was like, oh, no, that's a bad problem. <laughs> so 
I got home and stripped down, and oh boy, I I, I did not do a good job self tanning. Well, I about I don't know a week or two ago saw honestly in the span of a day saw three different people share their self tanning application process. Now we're never going to do that, okay, guys? It's not oh, going to yeah. happen. No. But I will tell you that I followed their process. And let me tell you and the listeners some tips that I learned that I applied in my own sunless tanning application that I think helped a lot. One, the mitt that you used is key. Yes, you can use your hands, but I use the Jergens Instant Bronze, which is also a foam. And I will tell you that I've done that with my hands. And that is very hard to scrub off your hands when you're oh, done. <laughs> so use the mitt. It makes your application easier. You're not worrying about orange palms. The other thing is you work from the inside out. And what I mean by that is if you're going to do your arms, put two pumps of bronzer on your arm, sunless tanner, on uh-huh. your mitt. Yeah. And then you kind of, I do like the outside of my arm. I do the inside of my arm. And then I work up to my shoulder and like blend into my neck. So there's not a harsh line where it ends on my neck. It's just kind of what's left on the mitt. Uh-huh. And then at the very end of that, I just take the tiniest bit that's left over and rub it over the back of my hand and the tops of my fingers. So all those drier areas that soak up a lot of tanner that have a tendency to go a little orange or getting a lot less product. And then it's more of a gradual like fade out up into your shoulder and your neck as opposed to like a harsh tan line. Yeah. Uh huh. Same thing for your legs. Like you do your thigh and then like kind of blend down into your knee. And then I do my calf and then just do whatever's left top of my foot around the ankle because those areas do soak up a lot. And I found that was really effective. Okay. I love all those things. I have a question. How did you do your back? I did not because I'm not wearing a bathing suit. So I wasn't sunless tanning because I'm hopping in a swimsuit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I did not either. And then uh, the day after I got out of the shower and I turned around and it literally my back looked like, I don't really know how to describe it. But if you were in like a theater with like curtains, (laughs) like a stage, do you Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like I got the top of it, like my, you know, Lower than my neck. Mm -hmm. And that would be like the red ruffle of the stage up above. Uh And then the two (laughs) drape sides down. Uh Can you visualize it? I can, I can, I can. So there's like a bright white light on the actual stage. Yes, exactly. (laughs) I think if I were prepping to wear a bathing suit, I may call in my husband at that point. I don't have a ton of faith in his ability to be a great sunless tanner applicator. Like, honestly, Mm -hmm. maybe my daughter would be better because she's like, wants to follow directions very carefully. But mostly, I care much less about what my back looks like than the rest of me. I mean, I just feel like, well, I am on a vacation where I would wear a bathing suit. So... I need, I want it to look a little bit tan. Honestly, I don't really care about my back at this point because I have two white stripes down the back of my legs. So, um, I'm like, whatever it is, what it is. <laughs> Did they just not get blended? Did you miss those spots or do they rub off like wearing clothes? I think I, well, you know, that's a good question because they were identical on both legs. So mm. maybe it rubbed off because I did put a pair of pants on after. Uh, like okay. I tried. Like it wasn't like I threw it on and then like got dressed. Like I let it soak in for however long. But uh yeah, so like the back of my legs have like two white stripes and I'm just like wearing shorts yesterday. I'm like, whatever. Wh- whoever's looking at me and laughing, enjoy it because it does look ridiculous. I have to say though that the sunless tanner, I've put it on again since then. It does give me a little bit of a confidence boost. And Absolutely. It just I felt good. And look, Obviously, there's no requirement to sunless tan before you put on a bathing suit or put on shorts. It's like wearing makeup or doing your hair. I enjoyed it. I felt good about myself. Trust me that my desire to sunless tan is going to wane as the summer goes on. I'm going to be less and less interested. And I'm just going to be fine with my skin being the color that it is. But I did enjoy kind of that just fresh back from vacation glow. I hear you because my husband asked me, he goes, why did you do that? And I go, because it makes me feel good. Right. <laughs> That's what right. I, said. I did have to scrub the heck out of my hands and my ankles and my feet because they were like, 
so much darker than everything else. And a shout out to something you made me buy years ago is the Korean exfoliating cloth. Yes. I, I was racking my brain the other day trying to figure out how am I going to like get this self tanner off my hands and my feet. And I was like using like, uh, micellar wipes, that didn't do anything. Uh, glycolic pads, you know, oh like, yeah. I was like, I got to fight it with chemicals. And then like, poof, I was like, I have one of those Korean exfoliating cloths around here somewhere. And sure enough, it did the trick. That is good to know. Um, I'm curious to know, like, I, n- I don't think I'm sold on this Jergens product, the one that I used. So like, if you have another one, uh, I'm talking at you, Megan, or the listeners. If you have a self tanner product that you just absolutely love, please email us because I, I think I'm going to go all in for the summer. Speaking of spring break, I was on spring break last week. You're on spring break this week. Yep. I have forgotten how to do school vacations, apparently. Why? Well, because we haven't had one in a year where it was a felt like a real actual vacation. It just felt like more of the same. Mm-hmm. And this year, what I didn't do is the first couple of days, I was so irritated because I was like, okay, this is great for the kids, but I still have all my regular stuff to do. Right. And what I hadn't done is I hadn't planned for it to be a break for all of us. And I hadn't, I wasn't getting up early to get things done so that I could then kind of enjoy the day with the kids. And I wasn't planning my day around, oh, hey, I've got the kids home. Let's do stuff with them. I was just like, the kids were home and I was still trying to do all the normal stuff. Took me until the end of the week, like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I kicked it into gear, but I am out of practice. So we did have a great last half of our spring break, which was nice. It did feel like vacation, went to the beach, went to the pool. We actually had friends over for dinner for the first time Uh. ever. How was that? Was that nice? Really nice. Um, You know, we were still outside and all of that. And Uh three of the adults in the group are fully vaccinated. um, And I'm almost there. But it was it was the first time we've even done an outdoor dinner with people. So that it felt great. It was really nice. That is so doesn't like just being vaccinated. Doesn't that like lift that kind of like additional stress off your shoulders like um you know like, it wasn't oh, like panic we, all the time yeah we can do this this is fine and that, when they left i told my husband i'm like wasn't that nice to have people over <laughs> knowing what you know now about spring break are you planning your summer a little bit differently like you know because you still have us as moms who manage the house and the kids and whatever, we still have obligations, right? And you still have those during summer break as well. So um, now learning how your spring break went, are you trying to figure out like how to manage summer? I am. And I think it'll be week to week. But I mentioned this before. And I was telling my husband, I need the kids to be busy. I said they not over scheduled, but I need them to have things to do. And I, we haven't quite figured out what that is. And I don't think it'll be the same thing every week, but I do think it will be really important for me to sit down and look at my week and what the kids have going on. And is this a week where I need to get up earlier? Or is this a week where I need to do more prep at night so that I'm not annoyed all day with trying to get my stuff done while also, you know, making summer magic happen? (laughs) Right, right. So I think it was a good reminder, like, you need to plan to make this successful. You're a mom. We plan to continue podcasting through the summer. I've got all these other things going on. The advantage for me is that my husband's off all summer. So that that is helpful in terms of, you know, there's another adult around and that helps house stuff things get done. Right. So me too. Like, so my husband recently told me that... His work is not going back into the office until September. And even when that happens, he's only going to be going into the office two days a week oh, wow. and work and working the rest from home. Um, so having some, another adult around all summer long is like, I love that idea. Not because like, I'm like, Oh yeah, you're home. So you can do this stuff. I mean, he is working, but, um, it's just nice to have like another adult there. 
you right. know, if, if I need to run out or whatever, or, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Yes. It's nice to feel like it's not all on your shoulders all the time. Exactly. Exactly. So tell me about Easter. How was your Easter? So I mentioned this on a Patreon video, but I actually think I cut it out of the Patreon video. But last oh. Easter was rough because it was our first holiday and we have Easter traditions and they didn't happen. And I remember standing out by the trash cans in the rain on Easter Sunday crying so my kids would not see me. It just kind of hit me on Easter at that point, like everything that we were starting to lose. Yeah, it was dark times. It was, it was. dark times then. It's we okay like to cry a, about it. <laughs> yeah, well, and we were like a month into it and it was kind of just hitting me at that point what we were in for. We still did fun stuff for the kids. Anyway, fast forward to a year later, my parents are fully vaccinated. My mother-in-law is fully vaccinated. Now, normally with my in-laws, there would be a bigger Easter celebration with the extended family. And we didn't do that. And I'm just fine with that. It was just my mother-in-law. And then with my parents, just my parents. But it was so nice. It felt like our kind of first holiday almost on the other side. Right. It felt great. I got to tell you, just being able to see them and the kids to be able to see them. And um, I've mentioned this, I think, before. My mom makes the greatest Easter baskets in the history of the world. And the baskets were back. Were they awesome? They were great. Even the neighbor, we were sitting outside and the neighbor could see us from outside. And she was like, did your mom finish her basket?" Oh my God, do tell. Give. I need the details. Like what was in it? What did it look like? I, sh- I wish I had taken a picture, especially because I I didn't have my phone with me, which is why I didn't take a picture. I left it at home. On purpose? No, uh. actually, it was charging and it was upstairs <laughs> and I just completely forgot. Um, but we got there and I turned to my husband. And I'm like, I left my phone at home. And he was like, good for you. And I was like, it wasn't intentional. <laughs> I'm Turn not on my <laughs> And there were like three different times I went to show somebody something. I'm like, I can't show you. <laughs> anyway, um, she does, she even does adult Easter baskets, guys. Look, I'm 41 years old. If my mom ever gets rid of Easter baskets, that will be <laughs> at some point she's gonna have to say enough is enough. I I she put like face masks and a purse and sandals Shoot. and a candle and candy and just fun things it was well she must really love okay well gifts are your love language right so this just hit home for you she must really love to give gifts and i'm guessing like yeah so like buying those things i I feel that way towards my daughter too like i want to put together i think i forever will put together something for her Mm -hmm. because i enjoy buying those things for her Mm -hmm. and then you know putting it all together pretty is so awesome so last night we had uh, went out to dinner and this was like a big deal because, you know, we mm-hmm. haven't, we went to like a really nice dinner because I thought if we're going to be out of town for Easter, let's, let's go somewhere really nice. It's open. Um, so we go to dinner last night and we're at a very nice high end restaurant and maybe I'm just old and cranky now, but like there were two tables of children with iPads blaring, like not with headphones on. We're talking with like full volume cartoons playing on iPads. And I was so annoyed because it's a nice occasion. And I get that families are going out as well, but like, is there not any courtesy to the other patrons around you? Yeah. I feel like headphones should be required. I mean, I was like, we're not at Red Robin. Like, this is a, you know what I mean? Or a right, pizza right, right, joint right, right, or right, right. whatever. Like, I, we spent a good amount of money on a very nice dinner. And I was just was like, I, it was such a disappointment. Like, and look, I know these are like such privileged things to be saying. And I apologize for sounding snooty. But like, I just wanted my experience to be nice. And it wasn't. Well, and I don't think, I'm, yeah, and you're not saying kids shouldn't be there. I just, think, oh, God, yeah, no, no. You know, kids can be there. Kids can have their iPads, maybe turn the volume down or put headphones on them. The end. Right, right. I don't, right. I don't I think. Mean, I've certainly had my own kid looking at an iPad in a restaurant before, but I was damn sure that she was wearing headphones and not to bother anybody else. But maybe that's just me. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. If 
you're making an effort to shop small lately, you know we love our friend Michelle at See Less Deal Shell. She has beautiful handmade items like zippered pouches and book sleeves, and there's even a bag coming soon. They make great gifts, but they're also a great treat just for yourself. Her price points are great. And on top of the fact that her prices are great, you can even get a discount with code LSSFRIENDS15 at clestealshell.com. We'll leave a link for that in our show notes. All right. It's spring break. We're thinking about traveling. We're dreaming of traveling. My husband every day comes to me with a new place that he wants to go. So we wanted to talk about trips past our favorite destinations. But first, I wanted to throw a little something at you. Okay. We're going to play a little this or that. I'm just going to throw a few categories at you and tell me which one you would prefer. Are you going to share yours too? Uh, sure. Okay. Um... Beach vacation or city vacation? Beach. Active vacation or relaxing vacation? (sighs) That's a hard question to answer because if I'm vacationing, then I want to relax. But if I'm traveling, then I want to be active. I hear you. You know, it's there's a difference. There is a difference. Yes. Are you a carry-on person or a checked bag person? Checked bag all day, every day. Me too. I don't know how people manage to get their toiletries into a carry-on. That's never yeah, going to be me. Right? I mean, I, I have – I we drove here. I have three bags of, like, toiletries. So I don't know how I would even, like, bring that on an airplane. One quart size bag of small products is not going to cut it. Not me. happening. Nope. Especially if we're on a vacation where we need a lot of sunscreen. Like, sunscreen alone is big. Totally. Anyway, are you an overpacker or are you a minimalist? I'm an overpacker. Me too. Yeah, you just never know what you're going to like come upon. So, you know, it just if you're going to a place that you don't have access to, like here, side note, I forgot to bring underwear on this trip. <laughs> so luckily there's a Target nearby and I could go run over there and pick me up a six pack of Fruit of the Loom. Um, but if I was in some remote island, <laughs> that's a problem. So I'm an overpacker. Well, and people always say, like, you could, whatever you forget, you can buy when you get there. I don't necessarily want to run around to tart, like, I don't want to have yeah. to go run errands when I get there. Um, are you a budget traveler or a luxury traveler? I, I mean, I like luxury. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't, what's a budget traveler? Like, looking for the best deal or like, it doesn't matter. You're just sleeping there one night. So what's the hotel like anyway? You know? Right. I think it means something different. And I'm, I can be a little bit of both. Like, I like luxury, but also depending on the vacation, like if we're on a road trip and we're just staying somewhere for the night, I'm more likely to just pick like a middle of the road, you know, I don't need the spa and the beautiful amenities. I just want like clean and, you know, maybe a free breakfast. (laughs) Yeah. And no bed bugs. So yeah, I mean, you have standards. (laughs) Yes, for sure. Well, uh, whatever. There's high end hotels that have bed bugs too. So, yes, bed bugs do not discriminate. Um, You know, beach or city is hard for me because I like a combination of both. Like, if you told me right now I could fly to New York and see shows and do all of that, Mm -hmm. I would go in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. But I also love the allure of just spending a week in Hawaii and having not a care in the world. Right. Oh my God. I want to go to Hawaii so badly. Okay, let's talk top three travel destinations. This was really hard. Yesterday, I was telling my husband about it, and we were, like, trying to go through, like, where we've been together and what we liked, what we didn't like, which is such a nice conversation to have. Really, you should revisit the trips you've taken together. I highly recommend it. It's it's almost like talking about, like, if you win the lottery, what would you do with your money? Yeah. You know, it's like that kind of conversation. It was great. Um but I had a really hard time narrowing it down to three, as I'm sure do you, you did, too, because you've traveled way more than I have. Do you want to go first? Uh, Okay. Okay. My first number one destination is Alaska. Mm. I've been there uh, twice, and we were supposed to go a third time several years ago. We had booked time to go with the family. With our kids. And Wendy and I ended up getting this. Uh, oh, yeah. that was that trip. Yeah. Oh, man. And 
we had already booked this vacation, but and we tried to find a way that I could be on vacation and still meet these requirements and we could and do it back and forth. And my husband was like, you know what? Just stay home and I'll take the kids. And as much as I hated missing that vacation because Alaska is one of my number one places and I'll tell you why in a second. Um, let me tell you, being a mother of two and being alone in your house for eight days was its own sort of magic. But Alaska, I like cold. I don't like hot, humid. So I like that it's cold and it's rainy and it's absolutely gorgeous. We've always done it on a cruise. I love a cruise. I know people have some feelings about going on a cruise. I am a person <laughs> through and through. Well, people like to talk about how disgusting they are. I oh. love a cruise. I'm not worried about like it being disgusting. I just get super seasick. So that it that doesn't appeal to me at all. Yeah, I have in the past, but I've found the solution to that. And uh, I just love a cruise. And Alaska is so beautiful. And honestly, now it makes me a little bit nervous to go because um, my husband and I, he took the kids back to one of the places that we had been and was one of the glaciers. And just the way the difference in how it looks now is just a little sad with what's because happening. of global warming. <laughs> yes. It was oh my sad. God. That's devastating. But we went, I will remember we went sea kayaking when my husband and I went and we were like in the middle. It was must have been a bay because the water was completely calm. But there's like these huge, like, I don't know, cliffs kind of like rising up above you and it's dead quiet and you're in the ocean and there's wildlife nearby i'm not super outdoorsy but alaska brings it out in me of course i then have my cruise ship to go back to <laughs> with mm-hmm. in my floating <laughs> hotel so i'm not camping in alaska but i do love alaska i recommend it if you're a cruise person okay would you recommend it non cruisy so <clears throat> the places we've been are all most easily accessed via cruise got it um some of them you can't even like drive a car into oh wow that's amazing by plane or boat um but i do know that there like you can drive through like denali there are plenty of places you can go that you don't need to cruise but if you're going to do kind of the inside passage part of alaska that is best accessed via cruise there are certainly plenty of ways to do alaska via land and what's the demographic on that cruise is it a is it a lot of old person's cruise yeah i mean what's your first location well, my first favorite travel destination, I've been there five times, is the Hawaii Hawaiian island of Kauai, mm-hmm. um, specifically Poipu. I love this place. I have told my husband that when I die, I want my ashes mm-hmm. sprinkled there or whatever. I just love it so, so much. Um, when we go... I say I would I would call this a vacation when we yeah. go, t- but we do like to go see things and do outdoorsy things. So um, we've done zip lining there. We've did the tubes through the old sugar canals or whatever they're called. Um, Waimea Canyon, which is like the Grand Canyon of the Pacific, mm-hmm. is the one of the most gorgeous things I've ever seen. Um, I remember driving. Uh, from our hotel, and I don't remember where we were going, but just the the landscape there, like my brain was almost overwhelmed and couldn't process like the amount of like different colors I was seeing. It's so, especially coming from Southern California where it's like dry and brown all the time. Mm-hmm. Like it was just so gorgeous. This is what I would imagine if I do like some sort of like East Coast trip in the fall, like seeing like just the gorgeous natural colors of the landscape um god i love Kauai so much and another thing that we do we always like eat a lot when we're on vacation we like try to like find like you know like the the local favorites or whatever so um in poipu like i love puka dog have you ever been to poipu i've never been to Kauai. oh okay so there's this place called puka dog and it's just this tiny little like hot dog restaurant Mm -hmm. (laughs) and and it's hot dogs but they're like um dressed hawaiian style i freaking love it like we always go there when we're there so we like to go eat we could go to brinicky's this place called brinicky's b 
Beach Broiler, which is just like a local family run restaurant, but it's, I don't know, it's just fun. I don't know if it's like we have such good memories tied to these places because we've been there so many times and that's why we revisit every single time, but Mm -hmm. I just love it. It's so awesome. I would highly suggest going to Kauai. I think it's like the best island. My next destination, so what's interesting is I have like destinations and what was hard breaking it down is I have favorite trips we've taken, but they're not mm-hmm. necessarily a single destination. Mm-hmm. Um, so my next destination is Ireland. I've been mm. twice. Um, once my mom and I went on a British Isles cruise when I was young in my twenties. And then we went for Thanksgiving a couple years ago, my family and my parents Ireland is so beautiful. It's, I can't even just, I mean, of course, Dublin's fun. There's, but you got to go to Dublin to go to Ireland, but you got to just get out into the country. And um, if you've listened to our ghost story episode, that story took place in Ireland at Adair Manor, which I dream of going back early in the pandemic when we were talking about like, if we have to be stuck somewhere for a long time, where would we like to be? And both my husband and I would go back there in a heartbeat. I mean, it's like this looks like a giant castle in them. It's absolutely gorgeous. There's just something special about Ireland, about the people there. I can't fully describe what it feels like to be there, but if you ever get a chance to go, there's so many beautiful places to go. Uh, I would recommend it. Did you guys do anything like active when you guys went there? Like what's there to do? It's a lot of sightseeing. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, my daughter and I did go horseback riding. Oh, fun. Uh, because she had been dying to do that. And what's interesting is I had been horseback riding a number of times. And in fact, used to go to horseback riding summer camp um, for like a week at a time. But that's Western riding and Western uh-huh. riding and English riding are very different. English riding is a much more active active experience like you're western you kind of just sit english your body is engaged the entire time i think it can be as active as you want it to be like you could do hiking and that sort of thing we were with my parents so it was a little more oh we um my husband and son did archery that's fun at the hotel and we did um they also had falconry so they bring out all their birds which was really cool um but that's not so much active yeah what's your next place okay my next place is boston massachusetts oh i love boston why i don't know i don't know that i've ever heard you say that you love boston yeah we my husband and i went there um a long time ago probably 10 or 12 years ago Uh, we went there alone i had had my daughter but she stayed home with my parents um it was amazing. We we went to a Red Sox game. We did the Freedom Trail. We rode the T, which is the subway system there. Um, we love to go look at the um, universities and colleges. I was ask and if you went to like Harvard or MIT. Yeah, both. We went oh. to both, um, which was amazing. Like to stand on the Harvard campus was. I mean, really kind of cool. Like, you know, like I just thought it was so neat. Um, There's so much history in that city. So it was just like overwhelming almost like to, you know, I don't know, just to be there. It was amazing. I would totally go back. Um, I had my first lobster roll (laughs) in Boston. (laughs) I love Um, lobster roll. And what is so funny from – talking to people there's two like pastry shops on hanover street that are very popular Mm -hmm. one is called modern pastry and the other one is called mike's and there's like a rivalry between the two some people are very team mike's and some people are very team modern we are team modern paste pastry it Maybe the best, actually the best cannoli i've ever had in my entire life i have not been able to have another one. And I've been to New York and I've, well, I guess I've been to New York. I thought that they would have good cannoli there too, but man, Boston was so good. I remember one morning we had, this is what we do on vacation. We went and got uh, pastries early one morning. I think this was the day we were going to leave. And um, 
And we just like walked down the street. We sat under this like big Paul Revere statue and just ate our cannolis and just like took in the, you know, environment. Like that is my favorite thing to do. Just the people watch and sit in like this historic, like, you know, city. It was pretty awesome. And side note, I know you've never seen it, but there's a movie called The Town. Oh, yes. It has been Affleck. It's one of my favorite movies. And this is probably why when we were there, this is how crazy we get. We went to see a movie and um, we went to see the town and it's the movie takes place in Boston. And it was so fun to sit there with like the crowd who was familiar with all these like landmarks where this movie was filmed and like people were going crazy inside the theater. So it was so fun was so fun and i just love that movie still because it reminds me of that time is that in my mind that movie is scary is it not scary it's like it's about robberies it's about the bank robberies oh, it's I kind of it's scary like be- creepy like remembering is the commercial they wear these like really scary masks yes yes the that's while they're robbing banks exactly oh, okay then exactly. i can handle it my final destination and i feel like these it's so funny because i'm not outdoorsy but I loved this vacation so much. And that was our trip to Jackson Hole slash the Grand Teton slash Yellowstone. And I combined them all because we stayed in one central location and visited them all. I'm not outdoorsy, but man, is Yellowstone something you should see in your life, as are the Grand Tetons. We went and I, my daughter was either, she's my youngest, she was either four or five. So my son, no, she must have been five and my son was eight. And so... Uh, we drove there and this was our first family road trip because when we were looking at flying, there was a tiny little airport in Jackson Hole, but it was really expensive. And my husband was like, why don't we just drive? And I was like, you can't drive 14 hours. That's Oof. way too long. Keep in mind, like we drove 2000 miles two summers ago. No. And then everyone was like, oh, that's an easy drive. You could totally drive it. You should drive it. It'll be great. We drove it. And that was the thing that kind of sold me on road trips being a possibility for our family. We stayed in Jackson Hole, which is the cutest little town, tons of great restaurants. And one day my husband and son went river rafting on the Snake River, which if you ever go, you should totally do. They loved it. And then my daughter and I went on a hike and she's this little five-year-old who has does is not a complainer. Like she's up for anything. Second children are the best, like, because they just had to go (laughs) along their entire lives. And so we went and hiked Jenny Lake. And if you ever go to Jenny Lake, they have a lake and they have a boat and you can either hike all the way around the lake or you can hike halfway around the lake and take the boat back, or you can take the boat across and hike back. So, or you can take the boat across and there's like a little like hike that takes you back to the boat and you come back on the boat. Anyway, because she was little, I was like, let's, let's go slow. So we took the boat across and our plan was to take the boat back, but we did this little hike up to a waterfall. And man, she was just trucking it up with her little five year old legs on this little hike. I can still envision her and everyone, like she was not complaining. She was just so happy to be there and hiking along. And we stayed in a hotel in Jackson Hole that like backed up to a creek and like the Canada geese came through one day and there were beavers building a dam and <laughs> wow. Just, and I remember there we went, we spent time in Yellowstone and we did um, other hikes in the Tetons and there was a little deli on the edge of town and we would grab lunch after our hikes. It was just a nice family vacation that had enough activity to like keep you busy and worn out, but like you still plenty of downtime at the end of the day because you're not in a place with a lot of nightlife. Not like I'm a nightlife person anyway, and you're with your kids. I recommend Jackson Hole, the Grand Tetons, at Yellowstone. I don't even know what the Grand Tetons is. What is that range? Yeah, I've never even heard of that before. Uh, it's gorgeous. Honestly, prettier than Yellowstone, but Yellowstone is kind of just something you have to see. I mean, we did Old Faithful and they took... What's that? A geyser, right? A geyser, yeah. And it's not even the biggest geyser, but it's the reason it's called Old Faithful is because it spouts on a fairly regular, predictable schedule uh-huh. as opposed to other ones. So you ha- you know you're going to see it. I mean, it goes several times, m- multiple times a day. So Did you guys see it spout? We did. Our cool. entire tour was like, okay, we Old Faithful is due to go at this particular time, so we're going to be there. Um, so we saw Old Faithful, and they take you to the like geothermal pots, which are like the ooh neat 
which are really cool, but if you fall and you die, because your like body will disintegrate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, and m- most people know that, and some people are like, I'm just gonna, you know, try and get the right picture. Anyway, it's oh very- my god. <laughs> I mean, people have died, um, and you see what. <laughs> Uh, bison and moose. I don't think we saw any bears that time. Throwback to our bear spray conversation <laughs> in a previous episode that I'll link in the show notes, but highly recommend it. You, the, our country, there are so many cool things to see in this country. I know. I feel like I need to make a list or something. <laughs> I'm sure there's a list out there. Um, but I, you know, I have seen very little in our country. So I, I don't know. Maybe I need to make that a kind of a mission to see these things. What's your final destination? Final destination? Uh Throwback to an episode we talked a long time ago about Megan living her personal final destination. That's right. Um, My final spot is New York City. Um, So this is so weird. I used to be afraid of going to New York City. Just maybe because I grew up in suburban Orange County, like, it it seemed very, like, big and scary. and overwhelming. Especially after 9-11, like, I was very afraid of it. You know, New York itself was, you know, a victim in that scenario, but Right, they weren't a perpetrator, but yeah. Exactly. But in 2012, I went there for a conference, and... I had gotten there early. Um, I traveled alone and had gotten there early. Like, I think I took a red eye. So it was very early in the morning and I couldn't check in yet. So I, there was a Starbucks across the street from our hotel and I just went and got a cup of coffee and sat on the steps outside the Starbucks and just took it in. I watched people. I just, I needed to get like familiar in the, in the environment to feel comfortable. And like, ever since then, like it's probably one of the greatest places I've ever been to you. And I went together. What year was that? I think it was 2017. I mean, it was a fast and furious trip, but it was so much fun. There's like, just like an electricity in that Mm -hmm. city. I don't, and I know it's like not meant for like, you know, like my dad says, like, I can't handle their, the, the vibe there is too fast to, you know, he oh, doesn't like it. Uh-huh. But like, there's something in me that just loves that big city and the like, the adventure you could have there, I guess. I don't know. I know you guys go there a lot. Yeah. So, um, when you're there, don't you think like, what would it be like if I ever lived here? Yes. 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 Like, I just wish, like, I was 20 all over again and, like, wasn't afraid, you know, like, go do these things, you know, try these things. Like, my life could have been completely different if I wasn't so afraid. And, like, for some reason, New York, like, holds that for me. Like, just remember being so terrified of New Mm -hmm. York City. And, like, God, it's such an amazing place. Yeah, the idea of going and living there for a year when I was in my 20s would have never occurred to me. But now I'm like, man, I wish I had done that. Right? Uh, It's such a special place. We've probably been 10 times and I have such great memories. My husband and I have gone. I've gone with you. We went on a couple's trip. I've been with my parents and my kids have been there. And there's just so much. It feels very comfortable to me now. Like we know our way around. We know the Uh places we like. It doesn't feel, it just kind of feels like coming home in a way. Oh, interesting. Interesting. (laughs) I'll never forget you and I, we took the subway. Shout out. Megan knows how to uh, do the subway system in New York. Like I would have been lost. She like knew it. Like she lived there. We took the subway all the way down to um, Battery Park. Battery Park. Thank you. And then we walked all the way up, like through the financial district to um, the 9-11 Memorial. Mm-hmm. And then I think we took an Uber from there. But um, I just will re- never forget, like that was such a memorable day for me. It was just like so full of adventure. I can't wait to go back. All right, guys, why don't you send us an email with your favorite travel destinations, Megan and Wendy at gmail.com. And we're going to come right back with Megan and Wendy approved. (music) 
Okay, I have to say that um, I did not put my item in our notes, but I saw yours and I had already chosen what mine is and you're going to laugh. So you go first and then. Uh, okay. Uh, my first item for Megan and Wendy approved today is the Soap and Glory Smoothie Star Breakfast Scrub. It, I don't know why I bought it. It was an impulse buy. Shocker. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, I just felt like I needed a scrub. I probably have a million at home I could use. Um, I did use this. I like used the scrub before the Korean cloth. So I mm-hmm. really, you know, um, but it's, it's made of like, it has oats and sugar and honey and banana and it smells like, um, uh, maple syrup. I think ah, maybe. I thought it would smell like coffee from the name. Okay. No, it's like a like an oatmeal breakfast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it says on there like not for consumption because it does <laughs> smell so good and it has a texture of like an oatmeal bowl of oatmeal wood, okay. you know? Um I really like it. I like soap and glory. I don't think it gets enough enough um exposure. I they agree. have a lot of great products. Uh-huh. So I would say go get it. I would say it's like $12. It's not cheap. The only thing I don't like about it is it comes in a tub and you got to like dig your hand into it. But other than that, I like it. Well, I also have an exfoliating product. Oh, look um, at that. And I have the Dove Exfoliating Body Polish in Crushed Almond and Mango Butter. And mm. it also comes in a tub, which is annoying. Uh, but... I bought this specifically thinking of, like, scrubbing off sunless tanner and just wanting, like, you know, to – I like to scrub my skin. I like to exfoliate. It feels good. Here's what I like about this. One, it smells amazing. Two, sometimes these body scrubs are real dense. Like, you have to real dig your fingers into them to get a good amount out. Right. This has, like, a whipped texture to it. I was so surprised when I went to scoop it out. It's so lightweight. It feels great as you scrub. It smells good. It's five ninety nine at Target, and I enjoy it. Um, that's funny that we both have a skin product. I know a t- exfoliating skin <laughs> a product. scrub. Yeah, it's just the season. I think because I'm yeah. all about like just like scrubbing the heck off my you know this gross dry skin and yeah. bye trying to yeah, bye bye exactly. Um, it's so funny. I can see these golfers outside my window right now, and this guy just hit the ball, and it literally rolled like a bowling ball. Like, it never got off the <laughs> ground. <laughs> and he and he drove his cart, like, probably 50 yards. Now he's hitting it again. <laughs> so, I, I think he's like a kid, but still. Like, that, that was funny. really funny. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. Uh, you can come back on Thursday where we are going to be discussing the third Spring Fling movie, One Perfect Wedding. And if you haven't yet, we would love a rating slash a review from you. You can find easy access to the Apple Podcast rating system by going to meganandwendy.com slash Apple Podcast. And that link is in our show notes for easy review leaving. We love and appreciate your reviews. If you have any thoughts on this episode, please feel free to email us, email us at meganandwendy at gmail.com and we'll see you next time. Bye guys. Bye. Bye.